Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode 23 of Meet the Judge. And tonight I'm delighted to say that we have a very special judge, um, FCI All, All Breeds Judge from Spain. Um, but more importantly, a very uh, one of the world's uh, leading molosser specialists, um, uh, a, a, a well-known judge who's sought after around the world, uh, extraordinarily good humoured, good humoured with exhibitors, uh, fantastic with the exhibits, and I'd like you to welcome Raf uh, Rafael Mano Al Crudo. Good evening, Rafa. Yeah. How are you? How are you? We are all right. How are you? I'm delighted because I think it's too... One moment. I'm going to put it... So, okay. I am uh, very happy to uh, to be together with all of you. Oh, we're delighted you're here. How are things in Spain at the moment? In the moment, uh, with the COVID, it's oh, a yeah. bit complicated because even in the, in the area I live, uh, really we it's a lot of problems and and then, uh, practically i think that this is going to be a long track yes Until everything come back to be as earlier mm -hmm. and is spain open for christmas mm, some regions are open and other regions are not you know mm -hmm. Uh, we are in Spain. Um, in where I, uh, in my family, I have a daughter and two and grandchildren, and then we are six people: my wife and me. And uh, so then we will have a very private uh, Christmas evening, but uh, it's complicated. And as you know, Spain is the I think is the country in the world with more restaurants, bars, and yes. so on. Yes. And that, it is being a tragedy, because yes. many people is living, you know, we love to live in the street. Mm. And, and, and now, you know, what happened is a, a real tragedy. Yes, and it must be very difficult for the businesses. Yes, 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 yes it is. Mm. And, are, are you having dog shows or are they stopped? No, uh, you know, if I had to be true, my last show in, in a regular way was in last January in Göteborg, Sweden. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was, has been, I, I never thought when I was there that maybe it should be my last show. Mm. But uh, in Spain, we have had some small shows, more um, uh, for register dogs and so on. Mm. But uh, and, and as you know, we we, we was very happy because we were going to have in 2020 our World Dog Show. Yes. And and then in the beginning was in April, and then it's July, and then in December. Mm. And, and then, but anyway, um, and, and are you missing dog shows? Um, uh, in a way, after so many years, dog shows uh, has been a part of my life. The, mm -hmm. To travel, to go the airports, the people, my colleagues, dogs, and so on. But now, uh, and I think this has been affecting in one or in another way to everyone. Yes. Now, after almost 11 months in my home with my wife, I was telling to you earlier that I never have been with my wife so long time together but, uh, as now, after almost 50 years being married. And then now I, I think now to go again to let's say to mm. Stockholm, to sydney to st petersburg um, uh, uh, i must tell you that when i was in the ring with the dogs i was happy yes but now, uh, now i am 71 and then to go and so and to wait because judges dog judges 
mm, we are mainly waiting for anything. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, for the, the, the airplane, for the exhibitors, for the everything. And now, I, I am, I of course, I keep so good remembrances of mm, all my life, but to say, ah, I am not, I need to go to judge. Yes. <laughs> I, I am fine at home. And you were telling me before we started the interview that 2021 is going to be your last year judging. Yes, yes. Uh, nothing has changed. Only if, and, and I say if, the, the Spanish dog, uh, World Dog Show mm -hmm. will be in 2022, they have been asking me if I will judge best in show there. Wow. Then if, they, if they again ask me that, I will judge best in show in Madrid 2022. Because that was my idea. It was the 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 end, the as you say in the British people, the the top of the cake. Eh? Mm -hmm. the, the, and then that's it. But, that's uh, a but of course, yes, yes. Uh, I know, I think that uh, everyone's life is like a movie. It has different moments. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy with my movie and I, have him, I think I have been very lucky. And I think that is okay because mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want to be uh, the typical elderly judge going. <laughs> Oh, no, I, I I have a lot of hobbies, a lot of things to do. I have several projects, and I don't want to be the one who is ah, how are you, Mister Rafael? How are you? Yeah, I am good. I am good. <laughs> well, that's a huge honor, though, to be asked to do best in show. Sorry, that's a huge honor. To be asked to do yeah, best yeah, in, your home, in, in your home country. Of course, the, uh, I I think uh, um, being um, as I am, I, um, that I never have been in any uh, national committee. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let's mm -hmm. uh, uh, still FCA committee. I have been always by my own. Mm -hmm. And they have been asking me to to just best in show in my country. Of course, it's a great honor, and and to, and to me was the perfect the per perfect moment to give up. Yeah. So um, yeah. I am very very I appreciate that very much. Very good, very good. Okay, so we are going to start. Um, so when you were growing up. Um, were your parents involved with dogs? Did you have dogs in the house? Yes, in that way, I, um, I, uh, my parents was not involved by dogs. No one of my family was involved by dogs. In, in by, by dogs. The only thing when I was a kid, uh, my family near the Pyrenees yes. was. Uh, I was a, a urban boy. I was living in a city in Zaragoza. And then when I went to the village and I see the animals, the cows, the lambs, the pigs, and the dogs. Okay. Uh, to me, it was really something special. Among those dogs were some mastiffs um, uh, who was taking care of the lambs and so on. But it was at that time, between five and six, ten years. And then that was in my, um, in my heart. And then when I became 18 years old, then I bought a second-hand car. Okay. <laughs> and then I start to go to the... Pyrenean valleys to try to find the same as Galahad was taking care of the Saint Grial. Mm -hmm. I was uh, trying to take 
where the Pyrenean Mastiff were, uh, uh, what happened with the Pyrenean Mastiff? Mm -hmm. And then um, at that time, I didn't know what the FCI or the Kennel Club or anything, I didn't know anything about the official uh, dog world. Yes. And, and then, but, but I was there, I was talking with the ship, with the shippers, with the country people. And so, and then one day when I was 25, so I was not a, a very young guy, for the first time in my life, I went to a dog show, a small dog show, who was held in Zaragoza, my city. It was a okay. dog with maybe 100 dogs. And then uh, it was, I really was started with that. And, uh, and then one year or two years later, I got the papers of one of my dogs. Yes. Uh, a dog called, named Thor, as the Thunder Scandinavian God. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I went to a dog show, a small dog show, the first time, because I think something very important is that we don't forget, all of us, that once it was the very first time all of us we went to a dog show. Yeah. In my case, I went to that dog show, I didn't know anything. I was there with my dog. Um, I went there, I didn't go excellent, I didn't go very good, I would. I, I get only sufficient. <laughs> and and then I was not so unhappy. Uh, okay. And because the, I, I, after so many years or some years, that judge became friend of mine, and I must say he was completely right. So uh -huh. nothing to complain. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, that was my very first show, and then I start. I found uh, one year later the Pyrenean Mastiff Club. It was the very first uh, cl uh, breed club in Spain, out in Madrid, and the very first club uh, mm, for a Spanish breed in okay. Spain. Because uh, in Spain, as all of you know, Irish people, uh, we always love the foreign things more than mm -hmm. the <laughs> things. So uh, the Pirinea Master Club was the first uh, Spanish breed club founded in Spain. Wow. That was in the year 1977. I was a young man uh, with a lot of strength and so on. And, uh, and then we, we followed the line and, and now we are we are here. And what was it about the Pyrenees and Mastiff that, that, that made you choose them? Was it the fact that you grew up with them or did you, did you just, what was it? Yeah, uh, as I have told you, uh, um, Spain, we are completely different to France, for instance. And yes. I France is a country a century pet, and Spain is a country century folk. And, okay. uh, yeah. Yeah. and then I, I am from Aragon, my, my, where I live, my region, let's say, is Aragon. Uh, the Pyrenean, we have a lot of, most of the Pyrenean mountains is yes. in, in Aragon. And I, even in my house nowadays, I can see every day the Pyrenea Mountains. In, right. And then I choose the Pyrenea Mastiff for two reasons. Because it was the dog of my land, and an Spanish breed, and because I always, when I was a kid, I was loving big animals. I mm -hmm. love elephants, 
uh, uh, rhinos, buffaloes, and so, and so on. So that that was a, a and 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 that has been my only breed. I have wow. been almost well thirty five, almost thirty five years, um, and I never thought that one day when I was a, a kid I would be able to judge Pyrenean Mastiff in Japan or in Sydney yes. or yes. in Philadelphia. And how long did it take you to start? How long did it take? When did you achieve your first champion? Yes. Um, one day I went with, my, and now I explain to you, I went <laughs> with my, that, that, that dog, that my first dog, and, and with another dog. I, and, and then the other dog was much better than my first dog. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I got my first champion, but it was not bred by me, in 1981. It means, uh, and then my, the first dog bred by me was a female. It was in 1982. Okay. Well, I uh, now I am be I, I can be I can tell you that I am very proud that I have been breeding more of 170 champions. Wow. Uh, not only in Spain, also also in another place. Yeah. And and even if some English people is listening to us now, one of my highlights was to be in crafts, uh, maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when I saw a stand with the Pyrenean Mastiff of England and some dogs just competing, for me, was yeah. I was there like a visitor, of course, but it was, for me, it was. Uh, a good, um, like a goal, like a target, like to have got a, a, a target. It was yeah. important. But yeah. um, that was my, my first champion was, let's say, 1982. Okay. And am I right in saying that you hold uh, the world record for the most wins with a Spanish breed worldwide. Yes, uh, in this moment, if I had to be true, now I don't know. But uh, when I finished to, to breed, it was a fact. Uh, and I was very proud to have put Spain. You think something. Mm, Spain, as country, always you will have been late in every aspect of life. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, when uh, in, it will be too long to explain. Okay. But, then, <laughs> uh, yeah. but then, uh, luckily, in, in, in use, uh, until 1975, when uh, Franco died, yes. <laughs> we was a uh, Nothing. Uh, the dog world was only for um, people with money, and that's it. Uh -huh. And then, in, 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 since that moment, the people, the normal people, we start to feel that we can be also protagonists. Mm -hmm. That's a feeling that never we have felt earlier. And, and then uh, uh, you see Portugal, Portugal are our neighbors. They, uh, they have been much more um, ahead of us. Yes. In, 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 in the dog, uh, in the, in the dog world, of course, we, we, we were neighbors in the same peninsula, but we didn't speak each other. Yes. But the Portuguese people has been a lot of uh, ahead of us. And then now we are proud after 40 years, let's say, that now we have top breeders, excellent handlers. Absolutely. Yes. 
but uh, that that, uh, that has been the uh, all of us, the people of my generation, we think, we feel that we have been protagonist that this dog, Spanish Spanish dog world has been giving up. Yes. And, and yes, you can be very proud of, of the dogs that, that come from Spain because they are, that, I mean, American Cockers, for example, in Spain are, are, are some of the best in the world. Yes, and in this moment, in, in some breeds, I might say, uh, we are in the in the first line. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And when you started judging, oh, sorry, when you started showing, um, were there people that influenced you? Uh, <laughs> uh, of course, all of us, we always have been influenced by people. Then uh, when I remember my, my beginning, really, we didn't know anything. We have to learn by ourselves. Yeah. But then, uh, of course, I I remember at that time. I don't know if you knew him, Norman Widobro. It was a, a fantastic. Uh, he was born in Ch in Chile, but he was living in Spain for several years. Okay. And he was showing other hounds and uh, as a work in in, in Irish setter. Okay. Uh, and then, at that time, he was the best, the best handler in Spain at that time. Mm. Uh, but you, you see, I must say, has been more people that has been influencing me, judging dogs, than showing dogs. In one yeah. moment, I, 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 I thought, and still, I like people show their dogs in that way. I like that the, in my own dogs, when I was showing, that my dog was with a loose leash, yes. looking, to the, looking to the judge saying, how are you? Yeah. And not hanging like cat uh, sausage completely. Absolutely. So, and then my dogs, uh, what was there in the middle of the ring with loose leash? So, yeah. and, and then when the judge approached, was with the tail moving so? Yeah. That is, is still the way I like the dogs are shown to me. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. Totally agree with you. Um, and as, a, as an exhibitor, what has been your biggest achievement? Yes, two times. Um, it's something uh, that I never will forget because the championships many times uh, has not so much meaning as other things. It was, I think, in 1990 something, in, I think, it, yes, European the world in Denmark. Mm -hmm. And I went with one of my best dogs, uh, his name was Javier, uh, Javi, and then we went with my wife, imagine, from Spain to Copenhagen. Yeah. And, and then uh, the judge was Rainer Wallin, and the dogs were really uh, wonderful in, the, in, in every way. And then that time, Rainer was uh, oh, almost crying with the, okay. but that was not the more important thing because I, I won the, we won the breed with that dog. He was in the group, imagine an exotic breed in, yes. in, in Denmark. The judge who, uh, who was going to judge the group get, got sick. And then it was another judge, frankly, I don't remember. <laughs> it was another one. And then we got second in wow. the group after the uh, uh, giant schnauzer 
who became best in show yes in, uh, in the show and then that was um, my highlight yeah but two years later in lisbon in in, in porto sorry portugal in the dog world show his son the dog the son of that dog were there and again with another judge another dog another judge got second in the group again is after a black dog after the new father who became the teacher if you know how being second you can be uh, so happy yes so, yes but no that's a huge achievement for what you would think is a, a, a not an exotic breed um I have one very funny facebook person has just asked do you read books i think they're referring to all the books behind you <laughs> yes yeah um so when you were breeding um um Pyrene and massives did how did you research pedigrees or did you just use your eye and say well i think that that particular dog is going to suit that particular bitch you see um luckily or unfortunately uh, when i was when i have been breeding the pedigrees was coming out from my times because when i start with the pyrenean mastiff the many dogs was coming from the mountains and then we yeah. had to had to make new register and so on okay. but that is not good or bad was exactly the same so we cannot be so exactly the same that happened with the fox terrier with the mastiff with the cock spaniel with all dogs in the past so it's uh, the, the only thing we do in spain as always is that we did it half a century after <laughs> okay yeah 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 Oh, yeah. But but it, it was a five. Oh, you see, uh, it's the same with uh, you did with the Irish Setter, with the Irish Wolfhound. Yeah. But a century later, and then and, we are, and we're look, currently doing with the Kerry Beagle. Yes, 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 yes. Of course. And so then I knew uh, the the all the genealogic things of the. But the thing when you are breeding you need talent mm -hmm. you need uh, of course you need to study and, and when i say study you need really because to go to the to your target you need of course a bit of luck yes and and and, and you need to enjoy yourself I, I sometimes when i see these people this the type of judges that are so crying because no one understands the breed but him or her yeah. my god and nobody i everybody's against the breed yeah yeah they're so right and yeah and, and breeds are evolutioning since the the first moment of the of the match in 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 in, in the in the in the end of the 19th century then imagine with your national bridge and they are so popular uh, worldwide the irish is such a the the the, the curry blue the Andrew hound they have been changing yes and then we don't need any 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 uh, um, uh, Buddha, any, any, no, any uh, people who protect the breed. So we are human beings, and we are taking care of your breed. So, so, but breeds are evolutioning. Yes, all the time. You're quite right. Um, and when did you first start judging them? And uh, I started my judging, let's say, career. Yeah. The international level in 1982. That's internationally. Yes, yes, and uh, I started um, a couple of years earlier, and then imagine 
1982 or 1983. In 1982, I started. In 1983, I think it was a world dog show, the very first world dog show in Madrid, Spain. It was really a tragedy. But I, w I only was judging one breed because my own breed. Right. But it was my very first world dog show. Imagine, my friend. Good, That's amazing. And then, um, did you get advice before you started judging? Sorry? Did you get advice before you started judging? Yes. Uh, you know, when you are judging, you are learning all your life. Then yes. when you start uh, judging, this is something that you are learning and you are learning for everyone, from everyone. And and then, of course, uh, I, 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 I remember people that I remember very well. They teach me a lot. Uh, one, uh, Harry Jordan, yes. and Carlo Fernando Renau, every, everyone in, but every, um, always, the, uh, you have to have your your ears open. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nobody knows, no, at least maybe God knows, but I am not a theologist. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but I am, believe me, when I um, meet somebody who really knows, not that he or she said, I, I know a lot about that. So people who I know, they know about breed, I am a bit exotic for me, I speak in this, or I don't know. Yes. I, I can ask to them really uh, to, to understand the breed. Um, deeper uh, but, but if, if you if, if you don't have that kind of um, attitude you are you are burnt you are finished yeah I could absolutely couldn't agree with you more and I have said in other interviews um, that I find when when we're sitting watching groups together uh, discussing the dogs that are coming in and out, that you learn so much. And we are all, even as all breeds judges, we are learning all the time. And if you stop learning, um, then you may as well stop judging. Yeah, uh, you know, dear, um, we, the judges, we don't see each other to judge in the morning. In the morning, it was you and me and everyone are judging the breed. It's yes. a really interesting thing. And we uh, meet each other, as you say, in the in the main ring, when we are there. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> <we'll be. laughs> yeah. and then, uh, there is a lot of different attitudes. Yes. You can be, as you say, and that is the positive way, when you are with somebody you respect or you appreciate, and then you can see, and this dog, of course, you don't see the same sitting in the ring side that when you are in the middle of the ring. Absolutely. But I like to, when, when, when I'm with somebody, uh, when somebody who I respect and I like to comment and so on. Then, of course, another attitude is, sim is simply to <laughs> fucking <laughs> Yeah. And, yeah. and I remember, I remember judging with you in Italy at a national show where you were doing, I think, Neapolitan Mastiffs, and Christopher Habig flew in especially to watch you judge them, so yeah. he could learn about and, and talk to you about about them. And I, and I, that that that's exactly what you know. That's the, exactly the way to do it. Um, in every kind of dogs, Christopher and, and other judges, when I was judging that specialty show in Italy, yes. and then I was so surprised and so honored that Christopher was coming. Christopher yes. is like my brother. And, and then uh, we have been more or less growing together, we like the same things, and then it was fun 
to see Christopher in the ring side with the other people from the Napolitan Masti. And but I think that is the positive, and yes. I, I think that, that yes. is very important. There is not any absolute truth in dogs and in anything in life. Absolute truth don't exist. So when something that I'm sorry irritated me a lot is when some people think that the only thing is really correct is ah their own opinion. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The, and you you can have you may have you must have your own priorities. Yes. Of course, the standard is the standard for you and for me. But your priorities, you have the right to have your own priorities, the same as me and the rest of the of the people. So, and, and I think this is not bad. This is good. Absolutely. Uh, yes, and then you can give more, impor more importance to a feature. And I can make to another. The important thing is that uh, even your talk and my talk are different dogs. Both of them are excellent dogs. Yes. That is yes. And do you think that new judges um, understand uh, the, the value of talking to experienced breeders and judges? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, an easy answer would be no, because in my times when I was younger, things was much better. I don't know. Uh, uh, time, uh, when I was young, it was excellent people, good people, people of another kind, and so on. Yeah. The same as today, the thing. The thing, the, the different, and I agree, in, is that uh, in in the old times, when we were young, we was there uh, as a rookie. Yes. The people who knew more. I remember, uh, I always tell that story, you know, with Harry Jordan. When I was in the beginning, I was a Taliban of standard. And the standard, standard, wow, oh, standard. And then Harry Jordan one day come to me and tell me, Rafa, learn the standard and then forget it. Yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I, in that time, I didn't understand very well what he was meaning. Now I, I understand perfectly. And then it, the problem now is that in many cases, you see young people with 29, 32, when, when, imagine when I was 32, I was judging one breed. Yes. One breed. And I became all rounder with 58. So, yeah. um, uh, but now you see people who 28 years or 30 years that they are practically all rounder. Yeah. 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 And, and, and then, and I think uh, to me, uh, the pressure. I am a very hedonistic person. I do everything to enjoy. If yes. I am suffering, I give up and, and, and everything in life. And then the pressure of being in the middle of the ring with a lot of dogs, especially if they are nice, the pressure to uh, look the dogs, to enjoy the dogs, to uh, just to give you, um, it's something fantastic. It's really, it's, it is, it's, yeah. it's something fantastic. Uh, and I, I never thought that you can, you could enjoy so much doing that. But then to be in the middle of the ring, in, in the morning, you don't know which bridge you are going to judge. <laughs> <laughs> then you are there and, and then the standard, well, because I always say, I'm sorry, you are Irish, and uh, if somebody, yeah, the standard, the standard means nothing, because the standard, well, not not nothing, is something, but then if, if the, the the British standard are very short, 
the Italian standards are very long. The, <laughs> but if you have not the, the idea of the breed, imagine, now read, please, the English Mastiff standard. Yes. Mastiff. Means nothing. If, if they only, if, if you only just the, the breed with that standard, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to tell you, the standard, the, the, the standard, but, but the standard for the Yorkshire Terrier is, is very similar. And, you know, it actually says nose not too long, not too short. What does that mean? Exactly. But, but in the other hand, if you go to the standard of the Maltese or the Neapolitan Mastiff, yes. there is any single angle, 123 and a half. <laughs> 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 oh, that's brilliant. Um, uh, when did you achieve all breed status? Sorry? When did you achieve all breed status? Yes, uh, when I was um, nine. Uh, no, 2000, 2015. Wow, so that took quite some time. No, no, sorry, 2005. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 2005. Still, that yes. took some time. Yes, yes, because this is another another legend. In in Spain, we had only for many years only two or rather it was uh, Norman Ruidobro and Carlos Fernando Renau, and then it was Javier and me. So. Yeah. It was uh, taking a lot, to me, it was uh, almost 30 years to become an all-rounder. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And I was reading in your notes um, that you don't judge in the UK. <laughs> Please, don't put your fingers in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, but, but I, must, I must tell you very clear, if uh, I, because everybody knows, you know, it's a question of reciprocity. Yes. In England, as well as in Ireland, in Spain, everywhere, there are excellent breeders, uh, excellent judges, excellent uh, etc. And the other, and yes. the other. And, and then everyone, I, I am the same always when I make any seminar, I always start telling that our sport began in England, in Newcastle. Yes. Uh, but it's a question of reciprocity and, and a, a question of principles. And I, uh, my friends know me and uh, then um, is something so amazing that uh, I never has been judging in the UK and I never will judge in the UK in, and I don't care. Uh, <clears throat> I have been judging, uh, uh, I make a seminar with Dr. Bordeaux in another time, but the first time they invited me many, many years ago to uh, the Bullmastic Club to judge uh, a CC. Yes. And then, uh, still, I have not a computer. I have my typewriter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep all the all the all the uh, oh, no, yes, all the documents. The records. And so, uh, yes, exactly. And then I said, okay, well, I will go to England to judge. And so, because I was not asking to judge to England, it was the Bullmastic Club yeah. asking me. And then my biggest surprise, surprise was when I got a letter from the Kennel Club. La, 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 <laughs> the Kennel Club. My God. <laughs> and then uh, they wanted that I was, I should fill a yes. huge questionnaire about who, me, who was me, how yeah. many dogs has been judging? What? And then uh, uh, I, I, I was, you know, the English, I love English. 
especially the classic English, there was a really very polite writing. And then I write back to them, I say, ah, but it, uh, the Purnasty people knows who I am. And then if you want more information, you can ask to the Spanish Canal Club. And yeah. then I was not asking to judge uh, in England and the end. <laughs> The English judges, when they come to Spain, never feel any. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have the same problem. And then um, uh, I, will, I, I send the letter, and the kind of club still, they answer me in the same polite uh, Mr. Higgins, a uh, beautiful English, send me, say, yes, Mr. Alcrudo, yes, but this is the, our rules. And so, and then even the president of the FCI are filling those questionnaires. And that was the, and then I went, yes, thank you very much. I was answering. And uh, then glad to know that the uh, president of the FCI is doing that. Uh, because if I will be the president of the FCI, this will finish in one second. But then, you know, the Kennel Club, don't need Rafael Manuel Crudo, and Rafael Manuel Crudo don't need the kind of club. So right. be, and I respect you, and you would respect me. Yeah. Nice to meet you. I send you my warmest regards. Truly yours, Rafael Manuel Crudo. And that's it. But it's a question of principles. Why an English judge that if, and I have had right, yes. a, a, a good admiration for many of them. But why he, they are coming to Spain to judge and they don't feel anything? And why I would go to England feeling, feeling yeah. a lot of fucking things? It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, aside from Pyrenees and Mastiffs, is, is there a breed you really love to judge? Yeah, all the Molossa. All, uh, all the Molossa. Uh, 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 mm, uh, Bull Mastiff, Dog de Bordeaux, English yeah. Mastiff, Neapolitan Mastiff, all these, I can kind of so I love those dogs, really. Mm -hmm. And is there a fault that really irritates you? Sorry? Is there a fault that really irritates you? Yes, uh, two things. Soundness, lack of soundness, yeah. and lack of typical temperament. Yeah. I mean, a lack of soundness is very easy to understand. And then something I love is to... Um, this is a bit difficult now that in, in America, in, in Europe is not so... But then you go there and then all the dogs are... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, uh, even imagine the boxers. You, you are there, <laughs> yeah. keeping, up the time, keeping up the time. But then if a boxer has to be, as well as a Labrador, uh, ah, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Yes. And, and, and of course, an, an Afghan hound or a Saluki, or a, they have to be. Yes. That is something, and now when I, am, I have been becoming old, I appreciate very much that every breed has their own character. Yeah. And we are not judging uh, toys or uh, teddy bears. We are judging dogs. And then that's why I like, I, I ask always, that dogs are loose leash. Come yeah. to me. Uh, imagine <laughs> a, a, a Labrador is is telling with the tail. Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. And just, just expanding on that just a little bit, there, there is a um, there is a trend creeping into Europe where an awful lot of breeds like Rottweilers and Boxers are being double handled now outside the ring. Um, no. That's not good. Another, another um, um, po political and correct uh, answer. Then I uh, double handling is prohibited, and I agree. 
Okay. And, and I, I don't like that and as earlier when you were judging boxers or revivers, even Doberman. And then that was a circus. Everybody there with the balloons and the ha ha, it's a big, big, big. <laughs> <laughs> But that is something we agree we don't like. But yeah. human beings, we have not a balance. We go from this size to that size. <laughs> and then now, if a Doberman or a Rottweiler see something 50 meters far and do beep, <laughs> my God, it is logical. A dog is an alive being, yeah. and I like that if, if, if he see his owner or his some uh, nice female or whatever, you know, is not, not being there like a and 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 then even to be discreet and that the dog is. Alive, alive. Yeah. I like to judge alive dogs because it's very boring. My, my, mainly, uh, believe me, my friend, is to to judge to be only talking about hmm, shoulders, top line, uh, loin, group inclination. Yeah. It's boring. Boring, boring. My yes. God. If, if, of course, you see that. But it's just dogs is a bit more, please. Yeah, yeah. Um, so somebody is just asking here. I think I have an idea who it might be. They're asking if La Plata in Zaragoza is still open. And also if you have a new suit for when you judge best in show. Is Zaragoza is open? What? If La Plata. Ah, <laughs> Eh, eh, Zaragoza, Zaragoza is a old city, is my city, is yes. a, a Roman city. Zaragoza, the name of Zaragoza, the first name of Zaragoza was Cesar Augusta because the the, okay. the, 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 the founder was Cesar Augusto, the first Roman imperator. Yes, the Roman world. Now uh, uh, we have cancelled the next dog show, international dog show in Zaragoza. Uh, I am so happy to have been held the, in January, in February, sorry, this year, because it was, I was enjoying really the show with uh, the, the judges and so on. But next year we are not going to have any, any no. show. Yeah. Um, uh, let's say, let's, let's see in 2022. Okay. Um, so, um, critiquing. Uh, you have critiquing in Spain, obviously. Um, do you enjoy critiquing? Do you think it should be introduced more widely in other countries? Critiquing? Yes. The critiques, um, to me, to me because uh, they are different kind of culture and nothing is better or worse. The Anglo-Saxon uh, culture, yes. I mean, uh, England, America, in, and when I mean America, I mean all America. Yes. From the Bering to, to Magallanes uh, Strait, all America. Yes. That in, 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 in Australia, uh, they don't make critics. No. In, in Europe, we make critics. Nothing is better or worse. In my opinion, in the specialty shows, when you are normally you are the only judge, yes. so it's very important to make critics. I like to uh, it, it, to take a microphone and to just to to think in high voice so everybody can understand the, okay. what I'm doing. But I think in that especially show it is necessary because if not you don't learn. Yes. You don't know anything. In the old bridge shows, 
is I have not uh, an idea. Uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe you can, if somebody asks you, you can tell to the exhibitors. But to me, it will be in the all bridge shows, no critics, and in the specialty shows, critics. Now I must say, and please, 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 the, in uh, that time I went to the, with the Dote Porto, I was two days, I make a seminar, it was coming um, several English judges, and then next next day was going to be the show. At that moment, uh, in England, where the best doctor de Bordeaux in the world was. Yes. And then I said something so innocent. Okay, if you want, I can explain every yeah. doctor. Yeah. And then everybody, no, 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 no. <laughs> Okay, when you are in Rome, you do what Robert does. Yeah, yeah. And the um, champion quality, like they have in Scandinavia, um, do you like that system? Scandinavia, Scandinavia, and I have a, my wife is Scandinavian, so I can, I am not. Is they are the perfect ones, the the, the perfect ones. Um, in Scandinavia, uh, they have the CK, and to me it's okay. I, I like that. But now they have so many rules, yeah. so many rules. And now I'm sorry to say I told it in in another program. And this is not in my opinion, it's a fact. 20 years ago in Scandinavia, it was the best dogs in many breeds in yes. the world. Yes. In the world. And yes. I was yes. uh, like a kid in a, in a candy shop. Flat and coat retrievers, best in the world. And now, when you are in the... I, and and I, 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 it's not a secret. I have been telling to to them uh, when I was when I have been there. And now you can be two mornings judging eighty dogs each morning. Yeah. Yeah. And you do, and, and then that is extremely boring because the thing when you have nice dogs is exciting because. Then you see this in some. Yeah. Well, you have nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's much more difficult in, uh, in fact. To, to, yeah. And, and that is because and, and they have so many rules. Rules. And now I'm sorry to tell what uh, happened earlier in Finland, in Sweden, in Norway in Denmark. Now, you go to Russia, you go to Ukraine, you go to Hungary, you go to, um, that they are judging, uh, they are, sorry, they are breathing as we did earlier, and you see those hundred times better. Yeah. And, um, as I am old and I am practically out of this world, I can tell <laughs> Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, and I rate exhibitors or exhibitors that don't agree with your decisions. Um, yeah. how, how do you deal with that? Uh, uh, now I, I can tell because it is true and I can be telling not so many complaints. But then if it is two, two kinds of complaints. When somebody tell you the typical what you have been, uh, what you have uh, like of my dog, then you explain, you are educated, if you know what you have been doing, you explain. And then uh, sometimes happen, and then it can be, with this dog, somebody gave, and then simply, simply is to explain. But the important thing is that you, mm, you know what you are doing. Yes. And then you explain. And then even that you are humble 
It's not the same. It's not the same that somebody asked to me about Abdul Mastiff. That I, that somebody asked to me about a Laiska of Western Siberia. You know. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And. In terms of your judging career, what's been your biggest achievement so far? Yeah, it, the, 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 as I have told you, I, I will finish. Yes. My, my plan and I will finish. 2021 will be my last year judging. And then I was thinking that uh, the World of Show in Madrid, where I was going to judge best in show, uh, it will be um, the top of my career. Let's say if in 2022 is the World Dog Show and they again want me, because yes. I have not organization, want me to just this show, I will do it. Because I have been, I have a very nice shoot. For <laughs> that. <laughs> for that, for that. <laughs> I make it one year ago and really nobody has saw it but I would like to just because I have paid so then to have um, um and then it, uh, this should have been but I I have been judging in I think 15 or 16 world dog shows and more or less the same of European dog shows and that for somebody who is not any member of the FCI committee of any commission and so yes. on that's it and then uh, that's it. Um, I have been in crafts uh, every four or five years. I go as ex, as just to see. Yeah. But then, then, and then is something I say to the to the rookies, to the new. If somebody wants to invite you, you say yes if you want. And if not, uh, to me, um, crafts, uh, the world of show, Westminster. Uh, there are things, places that our dogging people has to go at least once in their lives. Yes. And, I, and I must say, I, I liked it so much when Crafts was held in Erskart in London. Absolutely. Yes. It was so much better. There were so many yeah, things. Absolutely. Yeah. So much things in London. And you could go to as a tourist. Yes. London is fantastic. Yes. And um, somebody is just asking you uh, here if they, if you have a view on the rise of professional handlers. It's a job. Uh, uh, professional handlers is. Uh, in in America, everybody is professional. Yes. yes. In in England or Ireland, very few people is professional. Yes. In in the continent, in in the rest of Europe, more or less. Then, uh, if if I think if if. Uh, the, it's a job as anyone else. Yes. The, yes. And, and that judge has not to be influenced positively or negatively. Yes. Uh, because uh, I, I, as you, I know a lot of professional handlers. And then the important thing is not to be neurotic or paranoid. Uh, then if they have a nice dogs, you can give the. the, the the award you you yeah. have to, and if not, that's it. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. And now on a, a, a more serious topic now, um, and and particularly as a molosser specialist, which this this will have affected molosser breeds. How do you think the kennel clubs are dealing with this whole health issue, um, and the 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 activists in Europe? that are attacking us all the time. Do you think kennel clubs are dealing with it properly? <clears throat> Two things. Um, the beginning of uh, our world 
now is in danger. Is in danger. Yes. We have enemies very well organized. Yes. In lobby with the media and so on. The beginning of the end started 20 years ago with cropping and cropping and docking in Scandinavia. And then the problem is that not in with these enemies that we we know where they are, is ourselves when we are mm, buying the arguments of the enemy. Uh, and now we will go to how the the kennel clubs are reacting. When some years ago, somebody in crafts got a, a Scottish terrier and doing so. Yes. And then we ourselves not because a, 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 a Scottish terrier is is not a baby is 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 a Scottish terrier. Yeah. And we ourselves start in the media in the Facebook and so. Ah, oh my God, my God! How? Oh. What is that? Yeah. We really buying the arguments to the to the enemy uh, instead to explain that uh, how um, uh, a terrier a scottish terrier is and then the 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 national kennel clubs beginning for the kennel club and, and together holding hand with the fci is that uh, now they have realized and now, in my opinion, now they are behaving properly, but a bit too late. It's right? too late. Yes, you're right. And when you, you imagine, I mean, you know, Scotty, you know, an awful lot of these breeds that were lifted, as you have just demonstrated, were going down burrows. And, you know, they, they would have been dragged back out by that same tail. So it's it's a very strong tail. It's what they were bred for. It, it it was it was fit for function. And you're right. The the kennel clubs had a first of all they did act too slowly, and secondly when they did act initially it was a knee jerk reaction and they were admitting that we do have these faults. Are they doing it properly now? I'm not so sure. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. But do you think we should adopt a common policy, kennel clubs, worldwide? I, I think, Carl, that uh, we are in a very critical moment. Yes, I mean, I agree. Oh, well, very critical moment. Our, uh, the dog world, we have one and a half century of history. Yes. Uh, and then it has been mm, fantastic we, we to to selection a uh, amazing animal as is the domestic dog yes selection and so but now the problem is first we are not united this is very important and then uh, in many cases we are very subjective the, mm, uh, and and uh, the the enemy they don't want they they are step by step going down to get up out because yes. you know, they don't want uh, they don't want breeds because breeds is something and now I smile and I put is something fascist. No. <laughs> But yeah. that, in, in the, in, we have not been able to explain that breeds are cultural. The, the dog breeds I mean, are cultural. The Kerry Blue or the Spanish Mastiff or the English Coca or yeah. the um, uh, Rottweiler is, are a part of the human culture. 
Yeah. Do you understand? Because Agreed. when all of them watch a built up for helping the human being and for and, and to, to work with us. That, I think that is the point, and I think that now the FCI, as well as the Kennel Club, they are trying to to inform to the yes. to the about well, that. But well, I think I, it, I think personally, um, what Kennel Clubs are missing to to get to say is that like. The fact that Spain, uh, that you and other breeders are protecting Spanish breeds and have protected Spanish breeds, that the Irish Kennel Club have protected their Irish breeds, and now Irish breeds now have uh, heritage status. So, you know, they are protected. Um, you know, that sort of work is not being made public. Um, and, and that's what we need to make public. Yes, and, uh, I agree completely. When the Irish mm, people is taking care of the Irish breeds, they are working to protect Ireland. Yes. But then when you have a product, you have to sell it. Yes. And, yes, and you have to, to tell people what we are doing. The, the, the Irish setter is not only a red dog. Is Ireland a part yeah. of the Irish um, uh, soul, uh, Irish culture? Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. Um, now, as I have alluded to and said continually throughout this interview, you are regarded as um, a, a Malasar, one of the world's best Malasar specialists. Um, Explain to people what for you is the essence or the most important element of these breeds. And I know all Molossa breeds have different traits, but just some of them, give us a, a short insight into Molossas. Um, I, I, I assume, Colm, that you are a terrier man no i am i am a, a, a american car for spaniels okay. my wife is terriers okay then uh, when when you are judging moroser you have to change your mind you can and and, and that is a part of the art of judging not only with yes. Moroser. when you are judging terriers you are judging side house you are not the shifters, you have to change your mind. You cannot be, because if you are, sometimes I was telling you about the terrier, because some terrier people, for some terrier people, it's a bit difficult to, to accept that a dog de Bordeaux can have the hand a bit so. Yes. But then, uh, um, you have to, to approach the Molosser with love, with curiosity, and, and then changing completely your mind. Because yeah. also when I approach and I am judging Fox Terrier or Kerry Blue, I change my mind completely. So, then, for instance, in, among all the Molosser, the Bull Mastiff, is the more easy, easy <laughs> judge. Yes. Because the, a bull mastiff is easy, where is one, two, short, and a, a, no yes. secret at all. But then you go to the mastiff, and mastiff, there are as many types as dogs because they are all kinds, but then um, then when you approach an English Mastiff, you see how, I, I, at least I do, how worried they are. I yes. like to see a huge dog, rectangular, not short as the Bull Mastiff, 
who completely worried because the crisis, because the Brexit, because the COVID. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> That's so true. I look at him and say, well, I don't know what I'm doing here. So, <laughs> yeah, but it's a part of, of, of no, because the family. That is brilliant. And then when you go to the Neapolitan Mastiff, then it's your shh. <laughs> the Neapolitan Mastiff, please don't read never the standard. Never, because it will be you crazy. Because he never has seen a, a single Neapolitan Mastiff the same as another one. So then, as a friend of mine told me, Neapolitan Mastiff is not a breed, it's a philosophy. So then, let yourself so and then and then judge the dogs so it's another kind of judging yeah. with Molosser, but if, if you take the the knack the the, the key is very very amusing really that's that that is brilliant that is absolutely brilliant um so if you were to have a dinner party right your last ever dinner party um who would you invite four people that you must advise and they can be alive or they can be not so alive no i i don't i don't want to invite anyone alive because then i will have it in the chance <laughs> yes yes four people four people uh groucho marx oh very good yes John Lennon, absolutely. Chuck Berry, okay. And and Francis Ford Coppola. He's not dead, but, but I would like. Oh, that's what. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and. Is there a judge or a breeder that you really admire in Spain or indeed in the rest of the world? Again. Is there a breeder or a judge that yeah. you admire in, in Spain or the rest of the world? Yes, I admire very much uh, in Spain, two breeders. Unfortunately, they are dead. And both of them was very, very, very good friends of mine. He was uh, Carlos Fernandez Renau. Yes, yes. Who, uh, Gifted. Gifted breeder. Uh, Alberto Velasco, uh, Terrier man. Yeah. They, both of them were two uh, genius of breeding. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And then in, in judging, I. I also, Carlos and has Lettinen, and of course, Harry Jordan. They, yeah. they are not with us, but they, they are, I have stories with all of them that really help me to be who I am now. Yeah, Carlos was a gifted breeder. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and now here we are, we could be here for some time now. Um, <laughs> What's your funniest or most embarrassing moment as a judge or exhibitor? Well, I will tell you, but no, uh, now, but because we are talking and nobody is listening to us. <laughs> <laughs> you see, it happened. I will be trying to be short. Is it happened to me one time, and then it teach me a lot uh, because uh, judging those. As doing everything has to be to enjoy. You don't need yeah. to, the, the peace of the world, the the the, the poles, the climate, and the, so don't depend on your judging, but you have to enjoy. But it was once upon a time in in uh, I think in somewhere in it, it was a world dog show. It was I don't know it was Amsterdam or Dortmund or Germany. I don't remember, but it was. 20 years ago. And then I was, uh, ha I have been passing my examination <laughs> of, uh, of Welsh Corgi 
cardigan. Oh, it's okay. More fucking difficult bridge in the world, but much more uh, difficult than the Pembroke. But then I was my, my passing the examination, and then, ha ha, you see, you see, I am a judge, you see. Um, but then I was in the World of Show, and of course, I was there not to judge the cardigans, but Bull Mastiff, and another day, I think it was Golden Retriever, bridge I knew. But unfortunately, one day, <laughs> the judge who was going to judge the cardigans got very sick. <laughs> and then <laughs> the evening, they came to me and said, Rafa, uh, tomorrow you don't do anything, and tomorrow you have to judge the cardigans. Imagine that I was being passed by examination. That <laughs> means nothing, because to pass an examination is the same when the day you pass your examination, your driving license examination, it don't make you Jim Clark. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I never have been judging that breed that is really difficult. And they say, no, 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 no. And, and then the organization, very serious, told me, uh, Rafael, uh, you, you are allowed. Is nobody able here to do it, and we are not going to call another people. I was <laughs> and I mean, don't worry because uh, first class is gonna be the champion class. Yes. So you can see and then you can follow the line. Yes. My god. Next day. I was there with poker face, as if I understand Sony, but they really with my balls, if that's a lot. <laughs> there was about 70 cardigans. <laughs> and then open class, uh, no, champion class, males, two dogs. One like a Coca Cola, and another like a. <laughs> I will go back to Spain, I will shut a, a, a gun in my head, <laughs> I will go to under my bed and never touch again. <laughs> and then, of course, my face was, as if I understand, so, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> And then I, I, I talked to myself, Rafa, you have 50% of chances. And then I picked one of them. Really, believe me, completely different, one of them. And then in the rest of the classes, of course, at that time I, I knew to do it, it was the same type of the first one, of course. And then in the end, and I always say because normally is yes, no, I knew because no, it was just luck. That uh, that talk was the best talk in UK in the last year, the champion, and the rest was his offspring and so on. And then the uh, people to me, not but uh, no, it's not a merit of me. It's, it was just. Like, and then they, ah, oh, Rafa, and now so much that breed, but it's one of the more difficult in the first group. Absolutely. And, and now the, uh, I have been judging several times because that time the poor Rafa, with no idea at all about the breed, was judging the breed in a world dog show. Yeah. That experience um, is made me think that never again, never again, you have to 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 go to a to a show to judge the dogs to enjoy. And then it all means, of course, all of us we can make a mistake. Of course, or, or we can have different um, uh, uh, criteria. At that time, a guy only passing an examination. An examination means nothing. And, 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 and another thing I want to say, in every country, there are different 
different way to become a judge and so on. And people who say nothing in in no good system at all. Of course, the only bad system is the finger. You judge, you are rounder. This is a bad system. Yes, yes. Uh, but um, the rest of the systems without talent, talent and experience. Yes. And you've just proved that because that may have been luck, but it also proves a good eye. Because you would not have found the same breeding line if you didn't have a good eye. And you've always had a good eye. So, if you didn't live in Spain, is there a country you would have liked to have lived in? Or are you just happy in Spain? I love... I... I, I think the nationalism is like sugar. Uh, a bit make lives happy and too much is poison. <laughs> <laughs> but but then told that I was uh, yes and, and I, I'm completely sure of that because there is something the nationalist. I am a Spanish because I have been born in here. But the same human being, if I would have been born. In Dublin, I will be Irish and I will speak to you. And if you will have been born here, so it's yes. not good or bad. So, anyway, I, I, I like Spain very much. I like where I live uh, here in Aragon, near the mountains. Uh, but I, I can talk about cities. I love, I love uh, Buenos Aires in Argentina. Okay. Uh, yes, very much. It's uh, one of the, my favorite cities. I like New York. I I think also uh, London in yes. uh, uh, I love Italy I love I love Greece but but you know when you have been traveling so much in every country you have amazing things yes 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 and finally Rafa if you could write your epitaph what could it be sorry. If you could write your epitaph, what would it be? <laughs> uh, I confess I have been living. <laughs> well said. Yes, I like that. So, Rafa, I knew this was going to be enjoyable, and it, it has been extraordinarily um, enjoyable and informative. And I know by the comments, coming through on, on Facebook that people have enjoyed this thoroughly and um, thank you very much for taking the time you've been great good humor as always and um, thank you very much for taking the time thank you very much you have been a pleasure my guest next week I'm going slightly different next week because my guest next week will be Michael Code of Pamplona Bichon Frise uh, uh, et al. And um, one of uh, the UK's foremost handlers and breeders. And I'm very much looking forward to that. But in the meantime, I just again want to thank Rafa for taking the time out. Stay safe, Rafa. Love to all in Spain. And hopefully we will see you soon, very, very soon. I hope so. Okay. So.